5 Godot Editor Pro Tips The Godot game editor feels great with its accessible all-in-one interface, but it's not only easy to use, it has some power features to make your life easier working with it. Here are 5 tips to work faster and better with the Godot editor. You can jump to any scene or script swiftly with the quick open command, search through all your code at once with the find and files command, get full-blown code completion with static typing, supercharge your visual effects with curves and easings presets, and finally, smartly reuse resources in your project by saving them. Jump to any scene or script swiftly with the quick open commands. In Godot, you can open scenes through the file browser or the file system dock, but it's a bit slow and tedious. Godot offers two quick open shortcuts to swiftly jump to any scene or script in your project. Press Ctrl Shift and O to open a scene, or press Ctrl Alt and O to open a script. In those windows, you can type anything to filter down the list of scenes and scripts. It uses fuzzy matches, so if I type Ctrl Shift O to open up the quick open scene prompt, I can then type A slash C, and then I will have found an Area 2D slash coin scene. You can see that the A has matched to the Area 2D root part, and the C has matched for the coin bit I'm looking for. These shortcuts help massively with your pace when making games. If you name your scenes meaningfully, Control shift o is ideal for getting where you need to be. Same with Control alt o Say I'm looking for the player script. I can just press Control alt o start typing player. I have quite a large number. I can see the one I'm looking for down here. So you can see even with a large number of options, it's very helpful for finding what you're looking for. And if I can remember anything else about this script, say that it's in the common directory, I could have just started with C slash and then it will have found it for me. Search through all your code at once with the find in files command. Searching for a script might not be good enough if you can't remember its name, and worse, digging through files one at a time is tedious. Thankfully, Godot has a powerful search command to find the code you're looking for. If I jump over to the script tab and hit Control shift f the find in files prompt will open, and this searches our code for lines that match a given search term. It pours over every GD script or shader file in your project and will show us all the code that matches what we searched for, as well as what file the term was found in. This can make really tedious work a breeze. Let's say all I can remember about the bit of code I'm looking for is that it uses the Q function call in an animation player. I'm just going to type Q in and then hit an open bracket because it's a function call and I hit enter and it will search through our whole project for terms that match. And you can see here that there are three different files where that's occurred, rocket.gd, base.gd, and turret.gd. I was dealing with the turret, so clearly I want this one up here. And immediately it's jumped straight to the line where that bit of code was on, and it's opened the file that code was in. This becomes a lot quicker the more unique information you can remember about the code you're looking for. If you can remember pseudo-private variable names or the name of a signal animation, you'll be able to just jump straight there. It even lets you mass rename functions if you use the replace function as well. So as you can see, your response to problems can become very organic with these hotkeys. Being able to jump from file to file without needing to rely on the file system or the scene tree is a real joy. Get full-blown code completion with static typing. Writing dynamic GDScript code feels great at first, as it looks very short and easy. However, the price of this is it's easy to lose track of what's in your variables and get shady bugs. This doesn't happen if you use type hints. Godot can catch errors for you without running the game. GDScript offers optional static types. This feature allows you to avoid bugs and get full code completion by adding a colon followed by a type name when defining a variable. In Godot 4, type hints can even double your GDScript's code performance. Most of the time, you don't even need to write the full type. Godot can infer it for you if you just type colon equal. You can learn more about static typing with our GDScript type hint guide. If you want to level up your code quality, using type hints is a great practice, as adding just a little typing can save you a lot of time. You can even save some of that extra time spent adding type hints by letting Godot add them automatically by enabling the Add Type Hints option in your editor settings. Just go to the Editor drop-down, Editor Settings, search for Add, and you'll see this Completion tab on the left, and in there is Add Type Hints. With this option enabled, whenever you type a virtual function or connect a signal, code completion will be present by default. 
So if I add physics process, you can see it completes with the type of the delta parameter being set to float automatically. Defining types in this way really kicks off Godot's helpful code completion, accessible by pressing Control and Space or waiting for Godot to prompt you. Sometimes Godot can figure out variables and methods to autocomplete based on context. However, the whole typing system makes it much more reliable and will really help the way you think about what a variable is. Say you have a function that takes in a vector and you want it to move your player in that direction. With an ambiguous parameter, you can lose track of the myriad of powerful vector processing functions Godot has built in. But if we guarantee that parameter will be a vector, we can get an error if it isn't, catch bugs quicker, and get all the powerful code completion we want. You can also define your own classes with a class name and then access their variables too. It's a whole world of helping you see what options are at your fingertips. Supercharge your visual effects with curves and easings presets. Curves and easings are two very powerful exports, often used in visual effects and animations. As a result, you will often find yourself setting them to similar values in animation players and particles. To make setting up these exports faster, you can right click on them to make a preset. Let's tweak a particles node now and see what options this gives us. If we go to our process material and scroll down to find scale, we can then find scale curve, which we can then add a curve texture in. And if we right click on that, we will get the preset options. This is great for keeping the aesthetic of your particles and animation consistent and getting set up quickly. For this particle here, we want it to ease out and start at about half scale. So let's select ease out and drag our starting point up. And there, instead of having to set up the whole curve, we're basically done already. We can fire it off and see how it looks. And these curves are all over particle nodes. You can use them for velocity, acceleration, scale, angle, damping, and hue variation. The other export you can right click on are easings in animations. When you select an animation key, the value and easing appear in the inspector on the right. You can drag this around or double click on it and type in a number for yourself. The best bit, as you might have guessed, is you can right click and get a preset. When I discovered this, I had no idea you could set the easing to be negative and get the curve to both ease out and ease in at both ends. Using easings like this will really help you keep the aesthetic of your animations consistent and make you much faster at getting the animation looking lifelike with acceleration and deceleration with minimal effort. And speaking of curved textures, let's have our last tip. Smartly reuse resources in your project by saving them. Resources in Godot are everywhere and very powerful, be it in curves, open simplex noise, shortcuts, or anything else. Unfortunately, this means you end up setting them up an awful lot. This is worse still if you're setting up multiple resources to be identical. Thankfully, you can save and reuse resources. Say you want to use that ease out curve we made earlier again in another particle. Well, you can click on the drop down next to it and we can save it. Let's save it in the root of our scene tree and just call it ease out. Now, if we're in another point where we have a curve texture, say this angle curve up here, we can just click load instead of creating a new one, and we can load in our ease out resource. The more resources you use, the more you'll benefit from having a stockpile of good resources like this. On top of that, it even helps if you want to change that resource, as everywhere that uses it will update to use the new value. If you don't want this though, you can always make the resource unique by clicking on the drop down and clicking make unique, and that will keep it safe from future changes. How did you find the tips? Do you have any you want to share? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. If you liked the video, you'll surely like our three free Godot node essentials guides. Godot has over a hundred nodes and it's really hard to learn them all. On top of that, the engine keeps evolving at a rapid pace, making it even harder to keep up with best practices. In those three guides, you'll learn to make essential game mechanics in Godot, like an enemy with attack patterns, pushing rocks in a top-down game, as in 2D Zelda games, 
or display a glossary pop-up on mouse hover in dialog. You can get three Node Essentials guides right now at no cost. Click the link in the description below and enter your email to get them sent straight to your inbox.